Not that long ago, Joseph Pruce I sent along his Mark IIS 3D printer pre-configured, pre-assembled, and set up for the multi-material extrusion. I've done a few prints with it, and I've got some things to tell you. So first, well, first, let's roll the title. I'm Joel, this is 3D Printing Nerd. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? All right, here it is. This is the Prusa i3 Mark IIS 3D printer pre-configured for multi-material extrusion. Here's how it works. These four stepper motors up here with Bontech gears pull from up to four different filament sources. It then sends that filament through these four different Bowden tubes into this little mixer area and then down the throat out the E3D V6 and the nozzle onto the build plate into hopefully wonderful models. Joseph Prusa sent this machine to me unannounced and it was a little bit of a surprise to get a ship notice. I don't believe we had a review agreement established. However, I would like to give you my thoughts on this machine and I will continue to use it and I will continue to hopefully show you wonderful printed things. But for this video, I wanna talk about the machine and how easy it was to set up. I do wanna talk about some of the problems I had with it initially. And then we're gonna dive deep into the models, the purge blocks, and kind of some final thoughts along the way. Well, the setup process, it was fairly simple, and I believe I live tweeted some of the pictures from that. Essentially, this came fully assembled with the two sets of two stepper motors uh, on their little mounts here, just needing to be zip tied into place. Uh, I initially didn't feed the zip tie through the right holes, but whatever, I got it done. Uh, and then you had to connect up the Bowden tubes, the filament racks and spool holders were all assembled. Uh, the machine was really ready to go. I, I didn't even have to set the Z height. In the box, it was packed extremely well, just like the other pre-assembled Prusa machine I had received. One of the problems that I had though, initially was that one of the pathways was jammed. You could actually see the filament down in there. And so at 1.30 in the morning after I preheated the nozzle, I believe what I did was assist gravity in pushing it all the way through. And then it came out the nozzle and we were good to go. Other than the four steppers and the Bowden setup, this is essentially a Mark IIS machine like you've seen before. And it prints just as well as a Mark IIS machine like you've seen before. It does come with these. These are spool holders and they're these little metal rods here that link between two bearings and then the filament spools actually sit on it and the feeders pull the filament out through the front. I do find it a little bit interesting that either the PTFE tubes are undersized or the filament isn't a perfect diameter, but it's not easy to pull that filament through. The, the Bontech gears don't have a problem with it and it's able to pull it, but there's more resistance there than what I was anticipating. And so I was expecting a problem, but apparently it's not a problem. So I just don't worry about it. Also, each one of these spool holders has eight different bearings in it. And these look very familiar, almost like skateboard bearings, almost like bearings for fidget spinners, which means Joseph Proust and his team probably had to buy and take apart a zillion different fidget spinners to get the bearings for their spool holders. I don't envy them and that job. The idea behind these Spool holders is simple. They sit behind the machine and four filament rolls feed these four stepper motors. And there is a little issue there. There's nothing physically wrong, but because this tube right here and this tube right here go back and forth as the machine is printing, and because of the angle that the filament goes into these motors, it rests on this cable. And so as this is printing back and forth, you hear this click, 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 click. And it's it's a little bit annoying. I do want to find a different way to mount these. And I, I want to mount them maybe higher or it, it might be good to be able to rotate these up a little bit and feed from directly behind the machine. Like I said, it's not actually causing any issues, but it's it's a little bit annoying. Click, click, click. Print quality on the machine is great. And these are a bunch of the models that I've printed so far. 
And here's how it does it. The nozzle is first primed with the up to four different materials that you put in and it primes the nozzle which each of the materials right along the front outside of the printable area. So on the Prusa Mark II and Mark II S machine, you're used to it spitting out a little bit of filament right along the front. Uh, what it does is that exactly, but with four different materials. Then of course there is a purge block. So if this is your model right here, this is the purge block. And the purge block exists on the build plate outside of the printable area of the model. The purge block then is the place for the nozzle to purge the color it doesn't need anymore and start the color it then needs. Purge blocks can be wasteful. As to how wasteful, um, it all depends. And we'll get on that in just a second. First, I do wanna show these models because the quality is fantastic. They look amazing and it, it's crazy. It's literally crazy that a single nozzle is able to put out different colors and create these models. I mean, even this, this gear spinner, it actually spins and it's got four different colors on it. The model quality here is not in question. As you can see, it looks great, but however, we do need to investigate the amount of filament used for the purge blocks. I did bring my scale. It's clean and everything. And so I weighed the models, I weighed the purge blocks, and we came up with some pretty crazy numbers. Let's start with my first print, this little uh, gear spinner. The spinner itself is 19 grams of filament and the waste block for the spinner is 16 grams of filament. That seems like a lot. Nearly the entire weight of the spinner is actually throwaway. So it seems like you are wasting almost an entire another spinner to get this result. Is it a waste? I don't know. It's really up to you and what you're trying to accomplish, but I just want you to know that it's essentially almost a 50-50 split right here of useful and waste. This is one you're really going to be interested in. The Adelinda is 76 grams, while as its purge block is 317 grams. That's crazy, but the result is incredible. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about why it's so heavy. There's that word again, heavy. Why are things so heavy in the future? Is there a problem with the Earth's gravitational pull? The 3D Hub's Marvin, thank you little guy, is three grams, but the waste block for Marvin is 20 grams of filament. So a little more than six Marvins worth of filament is actually a throwaway waste. Uh, Marvin looks great, but man, there's that big block of filament right there. Of course, I couldn't go without printing a four color Benchy and it looks fantastic. And the Benchy is 12 grams, whereas its purge block is 64 grams of filament. More than five times the amount of filament used for the Benchy is used for the waste. Uh, it's crazy. Again, you're getting a wonderful result, but at what cost? Remember that little candy cane maker coin I made? It's 20 grams with its purge block being 11. And this is the first here. The purge block is actually considerably less than the model itself. And I have ideas why, and we'll get to that at the end. I did print this cool little mustached plate, and here's the waste block for that. This was 29 grams of filament, and this is just 14. Again, like the Maker Coin, the model is considerably more filament than the purge block, which is a good thing, and again, I have ideas why. Finally, I've got this really cool four color mixer, and it's purge block as well. The mixer is 103 and the purge block is 109 grams. So it's almost a 50-50 split, much like the gear spinner. How do we get these crazy numbers and how do they differ so much model to model? Here's what I think is going on. So in the case of a Marvin, Marvin is incredibly small, but the amount of space needed to purge filament doesn't change. So while Marvin is small and this maker coin is bigger, their purge block size X and Y is the same. It's just this is taller because Marvin is taller. So printing multi-material favors having a larger X and Y model area because then there is more filament being used for the model than the purge block itself. Remember, the X and Y of the purge block isn't going to change. 
So the larger your model is X and Y, then the greater percentage of filament is going to be used for the model than the purge block. Oh, this is heavy. When you get something like the Benchy, or you get something like Adelinda right here, the purge blocks are considerably more than the model themselves. Here's why. In the case of the Benchy and in the case of Adelinda, again, the X and Y of the purge blocks is the same. The height over here is taller because the model itself is taller but you have four colors in this, whereas Marvin and my Maker Coin, you only had two. So with four colors, each of the four colors has to be represented per layer, and that's why you have bigger purge blocks. But even though multiple colors are represented, there might only be just a tiny bit of plastic per color per layer. So in this Adelinda and, and in the Benchy, you're going to see places where even though it has to purge a color to get a new color, that new color may only be deposited a small amount on that specific layer. So in multi-material extrusion, you're going to waste less plastic if you have the most amount of each color being used per layer. So with this mixer, you can see that the purge block is just a little heavier than it, meaning technically you might be able to print an entire new mixer with its purge oh. block. And so the waste here is nearly half and half. Oh, but there's a surprise. When dealing with multi-material extrusion, when you happen to get a failure or two, then you're failing not just the model, but the purge block that is being created for the model. This one failed very early on. And even though it was 31 grams with a purge block of 19 grams, it's still wasteful because it's not a complete model. And so you have to throw it away or you have to recycle it. And again, here's this mixer. This is 103 grams and this is 109, just like the one that worked. But because I experienced some layer shifts, this gets entered into waste rather than a useful product. And it's not just the mixers and the failures that you can't control, you also can run into failures that you can control. Unfortunately, we did have a power outage and uh, the machine stopped. It's not a Mark III, so it doesn't remember where it's at, but this little fail benchy of five grams and it's six gram waste purge block is uh, just becomes waste now. You throw it away or you recycle it. Well, of all these models that I've shown you here today, uh, we've got 401 grams worth of models and we have 685 grams of purge block, giving us more than a kilogram of material in total. And 63% of that total is waste, is <laughs> is throwaway. That's crazy. But wait, there's more. When you add in the models that failed as well, because they're models, but they failed, all of that has to be entered into the failure. So then rather than having 685 grams of failure, we have 824 grams of failure, which is actually more than 75% of the total filament used here. That's insane. Three quarters of this filament shown right here is actually meant for the trash. <laughs> But is it worth it? Is, is this cool? Yes, yes, this is cool. Yes, it is unfortunately wasteful. And you have material that is waste that you have to throw away or you have to recycle, but you're not gonna get these results without having that waste. Yes, in the future, we're going to have the ability to waste less plastic and most likely have even more colors available, but we can't get to that awesome future without getting to this place first. We have to innovate to this place before we can innovate to the next place. Oh, this is heavy. I think what Joseph and his team have done is extraordinary. And I remember talking to him at a maker fair and they can go more than four. It's almost like this was a proof of concept. It's a really cool proof of concept and it makes sense to be a proof of concept, but it does produce really cool things. This just begs the question, hey Joel, when are you gonna get a filament recycler? Soon. You know, when it all comes down to it, you really have to ask yourself if this is right for you. 
The multi-material upgrade for the Prusa machines, I believe is a is $199 or $249. I don't know if it's been announced for the Mark III yet, so I, I don't know about the prices there. But if you create models that take advantage of this, then it's completely and totally worth it to be able to do cool stuff like this. Look at these things. They're gorgeous and they're awesome. And this mix, like this mixer right here, this mixer, if I were to print this in one color, it would be cool. It would be a cool single color mixer. And then I could send it like I was Bill or Brittany of Punished Props. And then I could paint it. Rawr. And then I could paint it. And then it would look really cool, but I don't have that sort of time. And I have this machine that can print in multiple colors. So at this point, this is a finished toy. This is cool. I could hand this to a kid and they would be like, ooh, it's cool. I mean, they would probably like a single color one, but I think a kid would like this more. And with the Adelinda, the design on this is amazing. And with being able to use four different colors, it brings out the personality of the model. It's cool. If you're just getting into 3D printing and you don't have a lot of design experience, then this, this isn't for you. You shouldn't get this. This is not something for you that you need. Just get a regular Prusa or a regular 3D printer, learn about it, have fun, print all the things. But if, if you're Chaos Cortec making some awesome models, or if you are a pyro design making some awesome models, or if you're 3D Maker noob and you're cutting up some really cool models, or if you're Luby 3D making this, or all of those things. If you're able to create some really incredible models that can take advantage of this, then this is totally for you. And you should get this and you should use this because it's so cool. I just like it. I really, really like it. I know it's not perfect. I know I had issues and I know it wastes a lot but I also know that this is just the beginning. I know this is where we're starting. I think that multi-material and multi-color is just beginning. 3D printing itself is still in an early stage and multi-material is at an even earlier stage in that. And I think, I think the future is bright. I think the future is multi-colored. I think the future is awesome and less wasteful and I can't wait to be a part of it. I really hope you enjoyed that. Uh, I just, I had this machine I printed some things with it. I tried writing a script and it just didn't work. And I just wanted to show some of the cool stuff. I want to talk about some of the stuff that I had problems with. And I wanted to talk about some of the stuff that worked. And I just, I just wanted to show it to you. So I hope this was valuable. I hope this was awesome. I hope you liked it. I hope you stayed till the end because then I can tell you to subscribe to the channel if you're not and to ring that bell to be notified of when hopefully recycled stuff is uploaded to the channel and a big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon, YouTube Red, and for everybody that lets the ads play. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more. I love you guys. As always, high five.